everybody, it's Anna Marie Strahan with Faith Lane TV and I'm so excited because I'm coming to you from my home here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, along with my husband Michael Strahan and our wonderful guest today, author and teacher Jeanette Strauss. And Jeanette is here to teach us about doing a home land assignment with her land kit from her website gloriouscreations.net. So we're very excited because Mike and I just built on, uh, actually we, this was our garage and this is this is the corner area to our home. We're gonna have like a little garden area here and we just made a, a new office and studio in our home uh, for, the, for the ministry. And we're here to teach you how to do, how you can do this for your home with Jeanette Strauss guiding Mike and I as we do this together. So Jeanette, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So good to have you. So Jeanette, uh, Mike and I are ready. We're ready to do this land okay. blessing. We, we've got a little hole dug right here, right? We've got some, yes. some rocks ready to go. Uh-huh. Because this is becomes like an altar to the Lord as you're dedicating your property. Um, this is a little kit that we have to make it easy for you that has a book in it and it has everything all the directions are in it it takes about 15 to 20 minutes which we're going to do this little ceremony and it's very simple because it's all scriptural it has uh, four communion cups in it and it has a little container that has a title deed in it because in the register of deeds in heaven the lord has given your property a prophetic name and so once we dedicate this land and do these little steps, which you'll see, uh, the land will be completely dedicated to the Lord and become an altar to Him. And we, we will introduce the prophetic name that the Lord gives your property. He will tell you what it is. So we're going to just follow these steps. And it's very simple to let you know. It's very simple to do. So there's 10 steps. And I'll just give this to you to hold. Anna Marie. And what we can do is we will get this communion ready. We'll each take a communion. And you can have, have it ready. You don't have, okay. So this is our little bread and our juice. And I'm going to pray a prayer for us. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this property that you have given to Anna Marie and Mike. And Father, we just come here today to dedicate this piece of property. So Father, we just pray a prayer of repentance for any sin that's been committed on this property since its birth in the record books in heaven. Lord, we stand in the gap as ambassadors of reconciliation, repenting on behalf of sin committed on this property. Everything on this, in this address, on this title deed that's now in, even in the physical, we encompass it all and we ask your forgiveness for the sin we ask you to wash it with the precious blood of jesus and father yes. cleanse it and as we dedicate it to you it'll get a clear title deed with every spiritual lien removed so father we thank you and we ask that the record will go back to the earliest days of this land's birth when you laid its original foundations and as we seek you in this repentance you remove all old covenants of sin and we thank you that you say in your word as we ask you to forgive the sin you do and you'll cleanse our land by your blood, removing all curses and judgments. So this land can be released into a season of grace and mercy. We're dedicating this land to you so that the prophetic destiny you've planned for this land since the beginning of creation will come to pass. As we pray in this way, we thank you that there's been justice decreed on behalf of the land in the courtroom of heaven and there shall be a physical manifestation on the earth concerning it. Amen. So next we take this bread right here. And I'll read this over the bread. So as you take your piece of bread or whatever you're going to use to symbolize the body, we break it in two because there'll be one half for us and one half for the land. And then what we do is we pray a declaration before the bread's eaten and, be, and we pray the Lord's Prayer. And that is because if any of us here have sin in our life, we ask the Lord to forgive it. We're in agreement in case you happen to have somebody sharing with you that really hasn't ever done that. So they can read this if they don't know it or most of us know it. So we'll repeat it. 
Our Father, which Our art Father, in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. For yours is the kingdom. And the power and the glory and the forever. And the glory forever amen amen so jesus said i'm the living bread which has come down from heaven if any man eats of this bread he'll live forever and the bread that i give is my flesh which i'll give for the life of the world so we declare that this bread represents the body of christ that was given for us as a sacrifice for sin the bread of heaven sent to earth to bring reconciliation and healing we ask that as we eat of this bread and place it in the mouth of our land, it will bring nourishment and restoration. We consecrate this land to provision and abundance, and we declare it will be nourished with the hidden manna of righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen. So you eat half. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And put half into this little hole that you've dug. The hole doesn't have to be real great big, like six inches deep, six across. Just deep enough that if there's any animals around, they won't dig it up. <laughs> hmm. So Jesus Christ has chosen us as believers to be his ambassadors or representatives for him on the earth. And that's in 2 Corinthians 5.20. As such, we've been given the legal power of attorney to apply his blood to sin that's been atoned for and reconciled through our prayers of repentance and forgiveness. This is the blood for blood that's required to cleanse the land of the bloodshed upon it. We understand we're not asking forgiveness for the person, but only on behalf of the sin that was committed by them against the Lord. Lord, we're the people you're searching for that you said you needed to make up the hedge on behalf of the land. In Ezekiel 22:30, you said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I would not destroy it, but I found none. But Lord, we're saying today, we are doing that yes so the next thing we'll do i'll decree these scriptures and then we'll drink half of the cup and put half in the land for this is my blood the blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin and after the same manner he took the cup when he supped saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood and do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me so, Lord, as we raise our cup to you as a memorial, a remembrance for your blood that you shed on the cross to redeem us and our land from sin, we read in the scriptures you ask the Father to forgive those who are guilty of your death. In Luke 23, 34, then you died and a soldier pierced your side and your blood and water flowed out onto the ground. In John 19, 30 through 34. So we're reminded of that shedding of your blood upon the ground along with your prayer for forgiveness. So we decree the sin, debt of sin has been paid in full through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And as we pour this into the land, it will be redeemed from death to life because we're symbolically applying blood for blood on the land. And we thank you for that, Lord, that we can do that. Mm -hmm. So we'll drink half of our... Drink half? Drink half and put half in the ground. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And I would add that in the book, everything we're doing is backed up by Scripture. Of why the Lord says even we have to have blood for blood. So, Father, we thank you that as we've taken the drink offering and we've poured the remainder in the mouth of the ground, that it will drink deeply to the very foundation of its beginnings and be cleansed from all spiritual liens mm -hmm. that the enemy would have against us. This is the witness to heaven and earth of the renewing and restoration of the covenant that we have with you. And we ask that this land will return to you, Lord, and shout jubilee, freedom from bondage. We bind this land to the purposes and destiny that the Lord has intended for it. So now in the kit, we have some oil. It's anointing oil. And it's in a little thing here. And we'll open it up. And we're going to put oil on the land, if I can get it open. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is the anointing oil yes. on the kit. Yep, a okay. consecration oil. Consecration oil. Yep, and we're going to just use half of it here, which I'll give that to you then. 
Anna Marie or Mike, you'll be able to. We'll pour half of it in, but not yet. In a minute here. We're going to do this together? Yes, you sure can. <laughs> As agents of light, we pour this oil onto the land as an emblem of the Lord's anointing and the light of the Holy Spirit. We bind the light of the Lord to this land. Yes. It shall flood down to the very foundations, illuminating and driving out all darkness. Darkness will flee in terror from this property, never to rob our harvest again, as a supernatural presence of the Lord establishes a permanent position on the land. And as we pour the healing oil of your consolation into the wounds of this land, it will bring forth shalom, peace, prosperity, wellness, happiness, friendliness, welfare, health, favor, rest, safety, and overall well-being of the Lord. It shall be a place from which shall flow ministry to all nations and people of the world. It does too, doesn't it? And blessings and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May it be a continual river of praise and worship unto our God and his Christ. Financial blessing and generational wealth will spring forth from its yes. depths with wisdom and honor as its resting place. And no evil shall come near anyone who treads on this land and seeks its rest. Lord, you say in Psalm 97, 11, light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. So we can pour half of that oil into the ground of the symbol of the Holy Just Spirit. Let's figure out. Do we so pour it all in? Half of it. Half of it, half half of it. Of it. Then okay. put the lid, you snap the lid right back down because at the end we'll use the rest of it. Okay. Yep. So all our right. next thing, we're gonna do abundant provision. And that'll be this one if you want to open it up. This one the here. The harvest the seeds. The harvest seeds. Okay. Can you get that open? Do you? So oh, there we go. Maybe you can. Oh, these little bags are sometimes. Okay, so I'll read this. Corn, wine, and oil are mentioned together 18 times in the Bible, and they represent the fruitfulness of the land. God's good gifts, and they are representative of the fertility of the country. Many times the Lord refers to seeds even as representatives of lives, as they're planted in the physical, will reap in both spiritual and physical realm. These seeds represent a prophetic harvest coming upon the earth. The way the earth gets harvested is through us, his people, who are his hands on the earth. So the Lord uses us to plant the seeds of the living God. Then, he, then shall he give the rain of thy seed, and thou shalt sow the ground with it, and the bread of the increase of the earth. It will be fat and plenteous, and in that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures, which is Isaiah 30, 23. And we'll read another scripture, and then we'll pour the seeds in. For this, this is Zechariah 8, 12. For the seed shall be prosperous, and the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens will give their due, and I'll cause the remnant of this people to possess all things. So we can put our seeds into the ground. All of them? <clears throat> yep, we can put all of them in there. And our next one will be milk and honey. So we do have a honey packet here. And we do have some milk, and we can put that powder. The milk land in. of milk and honey. Yes, you're right. If you can squeeze each of you can do, because <clears throat> you put. Okay. So where's our milk and honey? Okay. If the Lord delights in us, He'll bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Numbers fourteen eight. This land shall be a place of refreshing and supply. In this place, the work of our hands will be blessed with the good fruit of our labor. Investments of time and capital will be multiplied by the favor of the Lord. Prayers and petitions of unity and faith to the Lord shall pass through an open heaven to settle on his ears and cause his hands to move with favor and speed. Health and healing shall dwell here and go forth from here as a blessing to all it encounters. Friends and family will dwell here and be fruitful here, and this land shall flow with milk and honey. Amen. So now we can put both of those in there. All of it. Pour the milk, yep, and then pour the honey. <clears throat> here we go. Okay, that's okay. great. Good, milk and the honey. honey. Yep. And then our next one will be water. So we'll have a little thing of water in there. And the next one is water. The next one is water. Water, okay. So as he's opening that, a literal pouring out of water, oil, or wine has long been symbolic of a person pouring out all of themselves with no reservation 
even their blood, in devotion to his maker. In 1 Samuel 7, 5 through 7, we see this. Then Samuel said, Assemble all of Israel at Mizpah, and I'll intercede with the Lord for you. And when they had assembled there, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. On that day they fasted and confessed, We've sinned against you, Lord, which we've done today. In 1 John 5, 8, there's three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and they agree. Lamentations 2.19, pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. The water cleanses and delivers. We're sanctifying and purifying the land with this, and the water is a symbol of baptism under repentance, which delivers from the old into regeneration and new life. So Lord, as we pour this water, our hearts are full of repentance, yet filled with faith, and we're poured out before you. This water being poured is a memorial of remembrance to you, Lord, for all the times you've delivered your people even through the water into new life. We thank you for this baptism of renewal and revival coming to this land. Flood this ground with new life. Amen. Amen. So now we can dump all the water in there. All the water. Yep. Baptism of this land. The land, that's right. So the last thing we have is we have a a title deed here and it's in this container <laughs> it's a title deed that's rolled up in there and this is what it says <laughs> it says to all parties and I'll show you this title deed maybe I should walk up a little closer so you can see it maybe see that title deed it's got a communion cup there pouring the blood on the land it says to all parties with any interest in this land that was formerly known as, and this had two lot numbers, it's all on the same title deed, but 557 and 555, which is what a person normally will put their address on. It will now be known as Jubilee Farm. Is that what the Lord told you? Jubilee Ranch. Jubilee Ranch. Jubilee Ranch. This land is now and shall remain free from any ungodly spiritual encumbrances or liens of any kind. This deed is hereby freely transferred to Jehovah God, the creator of heaven and earth, as a clear title deed. Yes. And the seal on it with the communion that's poured says this is an official seal and signature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you witness it and date it, which we've done. Mm -hmm. And then we just roll this up, but put so Mike and I come into agreement with Jubilee Ranch. Yep, you just and it's stick been that put in the inside of here. Yep. Yeah. Do we need Do we need to write down what it is? Um, you can do it with a pen. Yes. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> this one has. I think it. I might Maybe need you can Mike's roll this. Little, Maybe you can. Really that oh, out. does that yeah, already this say? this is filled out. Yes. So you don't have to put it in the container either. Oh, you don't? You okay. don't because um, the reason that we don't have to is one time we didn't have the container, you know, and so what we did is we pulled out with a pen. The Holy Spirit showed us even that the the land will eat the title deed and receive it. So you can do it with or without. But if he can get it out, we'll put this one in. Okay, does this say Jubilee Ranch on it? Why can I come into agreement with it? Yes. Let's see, ranch instead of farm. Okay, so we'll give you this to... Or we can get the new one. Mike can write the new one. Yeah, Did you get you it out? You got it out. Okay, good. That you might need to put it on something to Got write. the new title deed? No. Oh, where is the paper? <laughs> I don't know where it went. Where's the one you just had, honey? The one I just had? Yeah. yeah. It came out? Oh, yeah. Right here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, I thought you were putting that one in there. Also. Okay, here it's we go. Here. All right, so... This says, you need something to, put it on. to all parties with any interest in the land formerly known as, okay, we're going to put our address. Mm -hmm. It'll be now known as Jubilee. There's two L's in Jubilee or one? I don't know. Think one. I think Jubilee so Ranch. I mean, you want to have it. 
Yeah. Make this land you want. is now and shall remain free from any ungodly spiritual encumbrances or liens of any kind. This deed is hereby freely transferred to Jehovah God, the creator of heaven and earth, as a clear title. This seal is the official signature of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, honey, write your signature on there. My signature? No. Yeah. And we put the today's date. What's today's date? 16th. Okay. 16th of 20. I'm a son and a witness. You're a witness. I yep. think biblically 16 means the abundant love of God. Perfect. Yes. I. Yeah, the abundant love of God. Yes. Right? John 316. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. 316. Oh, yeah. It's, it's 316. March 16th. Today. Yes. Awesome. March 16th. 2022. So the abundant love of God. Okay, here you go, honey. Roll that up. Yep. And then we can put it back okay. in there. So as we were saying, if you don't like, say you're going to print off more title deeds and do more land, if you don't have some container, you don't really have to have it. We use that because Jeremiah was told to put it in a container. Okay. So, alrighty. Right. So, Father, we bless your name this day. Thank you for giving this land a new prophetic name so it can smoothly transition into its destiny with new life. This land is now called, what is it? Jubilee, Jubilee Ranch. Ranch. So when we give our property a new name, we're rewriting the future of the land. We have erased the old entanglements that came along with the land and have given it a new future. Yes. If you're performing it and you've already given the property a name, you feel God has told you to name it, you don't need to change the name. But what some have done is add a line of description under the name that it's already called. Like an example would be if a church was called the Jubilee Church, the line under it could say the Lord is our banner. So what we do now is we put that in the ground. So we bury a container with the title deed and any other items we include, and then we cover it over and we put the stone on top. We put a stone on top. I'm using my dessert fork that Mike and I got for a wedding present. We I only got love it. one dessert fork. How so cool. we are, can you so see that? Very, there we go, yes. Very symbolic. So now we decree that the land is married to the Lord. It's ordained unto holiness. Is married to the Lord. In Job 5.23, it says, You'll have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the wild animals will be at peace with you. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. It's heard all the words the Lord spoke to us, and it'll therefore be a witness unto us, least, lest we would deny our God. Joshua 24.27. 2 Samuel 24, 25, And David built an altar to the Lord there and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord heeded the prayers for the land, and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Leviticus 26, 42, Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. Now what we do is with the rest of the oil, we take and we put it on top of that stone. We pour the oil on the stone. On the stone. And then Jacob took the stone that had been under his head and he set it up as a memorial of the place where God had appeared to him and he poured oil on top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, the house of God. Genesis 28, 18 and 19, he made a vow and consecrated the land. <clears throat> so now I'll pray a prayer of blessing over this land. <clears throat> This land shall be a place of courage and spiritual encounter of salvation and new beginnings, yes. of faith and hope. From this place shall go the generations of this family to the uttermost parts of the world yes. to establish the kingdom of God, yes. to bless his holy name and be a blessing to every people group and every nation on earth. All manner of creative ideas will flow into the inhabitants of this land from the mind of the Lord including but not limited to visual and performing arts, inventions, solutions to world problems, and an overall willingness to serve God and his people. Yes. Financial rewards and righteous living shall spring forth to all the generations initiated on this land and all who are related to them by blood or covenant. Mm -hmm. Blessed shall they be as they come in and blessed shall they be as they go out through the generations and the eternity in which they exist. Godly humility is their brand, and godly favor is their portion. Amen. Amen. And it's starting to sprinkle rain. Oh, 
That's very, very prophetic. Oh, yes. And so we finish up actually by reading Psalm 91 over, over all of this. Because the enemy will be able to see the effects or the results of our prayers, but yes. he won't be able to see where they're coming from because we'll be under the wings of the Lord. So I'll read, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He'll deliver me from the snare of the fowler yes. and from the noisome pestilence. He'll cover us with His feathers and under His wings we will trust. His truth will be our shield and buckler and we'll not be afraid of any terror by night or an arrow that would fly by day or any pestilence that would walk in the darkness nor any destruction that would waste at noonday. A thousand might fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. Only with our eyes we'll behold and see the reward of the wicked because we've made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High our habitation. So no evil will befall us and no plague will come near our dwelling. He will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways and they'll bear us up in their hands lest we would dash our foot against a stone. We will tread upon a lion and adder, and the young lion and the dragon will trample under our feet. And the Lord says, because you've set your love upon me, I will deliver you. I'll set you on high because you know my name. You will call upon me and I'll answer you, and I'll be with you in trouble, and I'll deliver you and honor you with long life. I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen. Amen. So that Amen. concludes... Amen. Our dedication here of the land. The land Thank ceremony. you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This Bless is beautiful. You. Thank you, Jeanette and Michael and I, and on behalf of our family and our ministry and our home and our land, we just thank you. you and we just thank the Lord for his goodness today and being able to do. do this. And I pray all of you will, be, will take this for your own land, for your own property. And uh, with Jeanette's land kit, it, she makes it so easy for you step by step and um, I'm just so blessed that we were able to do this today I am too thank you so much and so I'm gonna blow the shofar I forgot to get my shofar That's I right. think I think yeah Jennifer's here helping us my assistant and um, now the reason that we blow the shofar actually and I forgot too is that we are making an announcement to heaven and earth that there's a dethroning of evil entities in the spiritual realm over this property and an enthroning of the Lord. This is the voice of the Lord over this This is the property. voice of the Lord. And if you don't have your own shofar, you can just play a recording or you can of it on your, your phone. Voice. Yes, The scripture yes. says, lift your voice as a shofar. Thank awesome. you. Praise God. Awesome. Thank you so much. God bless you all.